Yeah. Yep. Uh, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Nobody Interviews the Scene. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, go hit the like button, subscribe. Uh, we'll add everyone's socials, so you can go check all of us out. And only 20% of you have subscribed, so please hit the subscribe button. Uh, he will introduce again. Alright guys, uh, today we've got Josh Fernandez from Woo! the F-16s. Uh, Josh is also J-Babe. We're super thrilled to have him here with us. Uh, what's up Josh? Hi, what's going on? Hey guys. Hey Stevie. Hey Hadi. How's it going? Ha! Bro, There's man. literally this one other person who's, who calls him Hadi. You're the his, second. <laughs> his mom being the first. Um, Actually, no. no. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, let's not get into that. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, guys? How's it going? I'm good, bro. Yeah. 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 This whole interview series was, you know, <laughs> born out of that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's good. That's actually a very productive thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm. So, uh, what's been up with you? How has this whole lockdown affected you personally? <laughs> Pretty, uh, you know. At first, it was, it was, it was okay. I was, it was a bit acceptable. I was okay with it because, you know, I like being indoors. I am a bit of a hermit. I like, I'm not too fond of going out and stuff. But after the first month, it started, you know, getting to me a little bit. And uh, then my laptop crashed, so I couldn't write anymore. Oh, and then my phone crashed, so I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't do shit. So, and I don't have the, you know, the kind of commitment I do for, for novels. So I couldn't be fucked mm-hmm, to yeah. be. <laughs> I was just walking around watering plants, trying to cook. And then, okay. uh, and then once you try and, you're, you know, you give your brain like some space to do things and then you just kind of give up. So I'm at that given up stage. I don't, uh, it's gotten me pretty bad, man. Ah, oh, shit. Okay. Yeah, I think it acceptance is. is the first step to getting out. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that not the answer? Are you guys gonna turn to my uh, my two uh, my two therapists? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, <laughs> we're going on moving to the next question. <laughs> huh. like, let's the... move on. He's fucked. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's pretty much. I think it's the same everywhere, right? Yeah, we, uh, I think. Even with yeah, me, yeah. Uh, I've just given up at this point. Like, I only write when I feel like it, and I've just been gaming 24 so. Gaming? What are you gaming? Uh, I stream FIFA on Twitch. Uh, I play Ultimate Team online. Got a pretty decent mm-hmm. squad. Nice. So, yeah. I mean, I've, I've never used, used uh, Twitch or anything, but uh, I did download the, the new Road Rash. Oh, yeah. Uh, the new yeah. one. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. And,. Uh, but I had to download, what's that, Steam? Steam? Yeah, Steam. Steam, Steam, Steam. Steam. Yeah. So I finished Road Rash and then I finished the game. I had nothing else to do and then so I'm back to being fucked. You know, so. <laughs> On to the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that <laughs> <laughs> Alright, how has this affected you professionally speaking? Professionally, it's been quite the blow, man. We, I remember in March we had at least um, at least 12 gigs in March and we were looking to close uh, you know close up a good chunk of money before touring season stops so that we could you know hibernate with that money we saved up for the shows we played but then March hit the pandemic and uh, it was pretty bad and like obviously live shows are definitely going to be not happening until next year yeah that's true and um yeah, I mean, like any, any every other indie musician will tell you that streams are almost redundant in uh, monetary wise. So, yeah, we hit quite the roadblock when it came to um, when it came to the monetary financial aspect of being a musician. I'm sure it's not just me; every other musician out there, sure. and festivals and everybody. Uh, professionally, yeah, it's been. I mean, it it uh, the boys for the F scenes we. Uh, we decided to be quarantined together at least for the first two months because we were currently recording in uh, a record so we were like we moved the entire studio to my place here me and Shank lived together and so the other two moved in and uh, for 
two months we were at it. I mean, we had nothing else to do because this is the first time in a very long time we weren't uh, touring or had had any obligations. So, so the 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 plus side was that we wrote a lot of music. We got a lot of work done, uh, okay. dig, dig, digitally wise. But uh, obviously, the cons is that um, financially we were pretty fucked. And uh, mm-hmm. when you when you have to pay rent, it's even worse. Yeah. Because you have to spend money you're not earning. True. Yeah. So. Uh, also, congratulations on hitting three million streams. Uh, I know. Uh, on weekend yeah. friends. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. That's pretty mad. Yeah. yeah. We were yeah. pretty su- we were pretty surprised too. <laughs> yeah. How how's how's that been like getting an impact speech being a indie artist? Um. Unexpected at first, um, but uh, things did look up. We got signed to uh, our first label, mm-hmm. and from there things did pick up. Um, what was the question again? Sorry. Uh, no, we were just saying, uh, how has it been the experience? Uh, getting three million streams, getting an international and audience, international audience, and uh, a steady following as well. Yeah. It's 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 overwhelming, man. It's pretty. It's a very good feeling. It is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, so like we we want to ask you a few questions, which uh, it's gonna be a list. So top five shows that you've witnessed. That I've witnessed. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like. Okay. Like seen seen another yeah. band play yeah, like anything band absolutely. Band. Anything. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, I remember. I think when we went to play uh, the Converse Rubber Tracks in the yeah. US. Yeah. We, And uh, me and uh, Harry decided to go to Philadelphia, and the other boys decided to go for this other band uh, called Pond. Mm-hmm. Okay. But me and Harshu went for uh, the Voice live at uh, Electric, okay. Electric something, Electric Factory. Okay. The Voice is uh, Julian Casablancas from The Strokes, his, his other his other band. Yeah, yeah. And like I, I like I look up to very few. Um, Uh, you know, artists musically. Julian is one of them. So seeing him live was definitely one of my. I was I was pretty awestruck seeing him. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the voids was one. Um. I remember the battles coming to Bangalore at the Humming Tree. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they're like this. This they're an instrumental band. That primarily deal with like uh, electronic guitars and pedals and just super super loopy stuff, you know. Yeah, just yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. like just old dudes who are really ahead of their time. And so yeah, it was nice to um, it was nice to see them live. Um, other than that, I don't know. We played with like played with uh, we shared the stage with Mogwai. Mute Ooh, math, nice. mute math, mute math, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mega death, all J, yeah. um, dinosaur pile up, yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're they're pretty good, but battles and the voids were my top ten. Sure. Okay, okay. Uh, okay, the top five shows you've enjoyed playing is playing as J Bay band as well. Yeah, J Bay we haven't reached. A, a show that I've enjoyed <laughs> playing. Uh, J Bab actually, uh, um, J Bab was the, the the skate park that I played. It was. Um, oh yes. Yeah, the, I think they launched the skate park and I was, uh, I was closing for the night. Okay. It was super amazing. It was like BYOB and just just kids and skateboards and <laughs> flamethrowers and stuff wow. like that. It was super fun. I remember that. Um, But I think with the F16s, we've had definitely the most, uh, most fun, the most fun. Yeah. Um, what was the question? What is what is? Uh, top five shows you've enjoyed playing. Playing yourself. Enjoyed yeah. playing. Uh, when it comes to playing shows, I think it's. Uh, I think after a while, it's like a plateau because okay. you. Um, it's like a muscle memory. So after a while. You know, some days we really kill it vocally or guitar-wise, but we've come to a point where we barely we've rehearsed so much over these years that we don't fuck up. 
So it's it's not like oh, it's so most of the memories I've made up before the show or after the show. Okay. Very few in between. Like I remember once, um, uh, I think at a Supersonic, mm-hmm. Hoshi got really excited at one point and he he jumped off the stage onto the front row monitor. Wow. Which which is normal. And then but when he tried to jump back, he fell down and. <laughs> Pull, pull, movies, guitars off, <laughs> and then trip, trip further down and trip into the drums, and then it was, it was chaos. I loved it. <laughs> uh, at Humming Tree, I remember at the it was the launch that we played of I think Trigger Punk. Trigger Punk. Yeah. yeah. And I think um, one of our friends was there. She was trying to be a, a saleswoman of sorts, and she was like, um, whoever buys. Uh, a CD gets to come for the after party with the F16s. Okay. But there was no after party. We just had like <laughs> these these double hotel room things that were booked close by. Yeah. And at the end of the show, there were like 45 people following us back to our hotel rooms. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. And then they came in, and uh, the full hotel was swarmed with these people, and they. They br- they broke a sink or something, and uh, I think the cops were called. And then I think the the hotel withdrew its uh, endorsement to the humming tree after that. Wow! <laughs> yeah. I think at, at fandom, this is the first and last time I think I was thrown a bra at me. Um, oh yes. Uh, then bra. I think our most memorable ones have been in the northeast, man. Mm. Those, those, those places. That, that place is crazy. Like, I, I don't think, I don't even think India deserves the Northeast. You know, <laughs> such a beautiful place with such beautiful people who really know how to party. And I, I think Northeast was. I had a crazy story there. I don't know if it's, it's, it's really long and stuff. Um, okay, we'll probably save it for after the interview. Save it for another day. Yeah. 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 Uh, sh- uh, there was another one in Weekender, I think. Uh, I remember breaking my finger at the airport. Okay. And I think last minute we were playing with Scrat in the same building on the same oh, Weekender. Oh, yes. Mm. And last minute I think TT came to a hotel room and learned all our songs and played yeah. guitar. So it wasn't an epic moment, yeah. but it was a m- very memorable one. You know? Okay. Yeah. I've seen pictures of that. Yeah. 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 With the cast star and everything. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so what's the longest you've gone without being paid per show? So this question we ask all our guests and we're trying and to put a speed of yeah, board. We have a who's gone the longest. So. We've been a band for six years. So okay. I would say six years. Cheesy. Yeah, there's actually been a bunch of shows that we still haven't been paid for. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I remember, um, Fuck it, I'm gonna call them out. Um, I remember when Hard Rock Cafe came to Chennai. Yeah. yeah. So um, we were doing the launch for them, and yeah. I, I think they didn't get their alcohol license yet. Yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah even until they closed down, I don't think they got their alcohol. That's why they closed down because they never yeah. got it. No one, not everybody gets their license in Chennai. People outside yeah. don't understand how hard it is to get a license, and um, they were serving fucking juice. So it was like a soft rock cafe, and uh, yeah, they haven't paid us to date either. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. So I think. Uh, uh, but if there's other people point. listening, if there's other people listening to solve this problem, what uh, what we learned over the years is that a contract really comes in help, really comes into play at, at these sort of situations. Where so now we work in a way where um, we. We ask 50% in advance before yeah. we play and 50% after we play. So that we don't get fucked over or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Makes sense. But, yeah. Um, yeah. So okay. like, you're at number two. Very number two? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. Number two what? Uh, uh, on, on the leaderboard. leaderboard. Yeah. The longest without being paid for the show. Oh, I'm at the second spot. Who's first? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think Jitesh. Jitesh? Yeah. yeah. Who? Uh, Jitesh, Jitesh. From Junkyard Group. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. How long? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 10 years. 
<laughs> I think more than I think it's 14. Yeah, I don't something. remember. I think yeah, 14. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been playing a uh, way longer than we have been sure. Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, okay. Uh so Josh, where did in your musical journey begin? Uh when I was when I was a little baby, man. I was um uh, I think um Yeah, when I was really young, mm-hmm. uh, my 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 folks were into music a lot. Okay. So my dad used to play in a jazz band with my mom. Oh, uh, nice. So I grew up in a house full of records and guitars and trumpets and then the church choir. So I think yeah, I think music started off for me way back. Oh, hey, in case you guys are wondering why I'm wearing a bindi, yeah, we're gonna ask you <laughs> because it's because. Um, Because I bought these bindis to put it on my stuff. Mm. Oh, okay. okay. Don't watch. And then FBI. I'm... <laughs> Not today. <laughs> <laughs> so that um, yeah, I thought fucking might as well just wear one. I guess. But, but I dig it. I might keep it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Looks like you. You probably will. What's my question? What's my question again? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Why your yeah, musical journey? Yeah. Why? Yeah, so as a kid, it started there, and I went for piano classes. Uh, my dad taught me guitar, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's it. It just, and then I think once I went to MCC, honestly, is when I really decided to take take it seriously as like yeah, full time, yeah, full time profession. Okay, so when was the first time you played on stage? Do you remember that experience? Um, the first time I played on stage, like, would you as mean, Josh Fernandez, right? like, uh, first maybe in school or uh... yeah, in school, man. It was probably in school. I think I did like a couple of theatre plays in high school. Okay, but uh, I was uh, I was just a tree. I was, it was I think Joseph and the multicolored coat, and I was cast as the tree, but the trees are the same, so. Okay. That was my first time on stage. Yeah. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. So, how was uh, touring abroad different from touring? Yeah. Touring and recording abroad. I mean, you guys. Are, yeah. Yeah. Very. Like, you've done a lot of uh, international tours. Yeah. Very different. Uh, touring abroad. Touring abroad was. I think the first time we went abroad was for the Congress rubber track thing. Mm. Yeah, we didn't. Brooklyn, is it? Yeah, Brooklyn, mm. yeah, New, Brooklyn, New York. We we uh, but it wasn't a tour. It was more. Uh, it was just to record. We had one of the youths who just go yeah. track and uh, track and be there. But the okay. first time we toured was um, we did a uh, we did a uh, uh, a Southeast Asia tour. Okay. With um, in Singapore, Vietnam, mm. Thailand, and it was pretty crazy because. Because when you play in India, you live in a bubble, you know. Yeah. You are playing yeah. only to your fellow brown skin boys and girls, you know. So you don't really have a valuable litmus test for your music, yeah. mm-hmm. unless it goes outside the boundaries of your own country, you know. So uh, when we played in Singapore, and you know, we were we were quite well received, and. It was pretty. It was pretty astonishing to us because we. This was our first time, too. and um, we. I remember we were playing with a bunch of bands. There was another band from Japan. And they were these like all like six two beautiful <laughs> long long haired gorgeous men on stage making amazing music, you know. And they came fully prepared. And after the show, uh, they had like this table out with. All their merch laid yeah. out with okay. uh, with placards of, uh, of how much each thing cost. We had everything, you know, pins and, and pens yeah. and shirts and caps. And we went there with just CDs and T-shirts. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, so I remember that day when uh, after our show we were like, we have some merch. If anybody likes our shit, come. You know, we have CDs and mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, I remember Shang put out his like his uh, his. His car, like his hatch, yeah. put on the floor and squatted like he was selling fish. Yeah. <laughs> we just put our shirts and our CDs, 
and we sold out all our merch on the first gig of our whoa that that's was, sick that was crazy it was like we i think we made about like 50 60 grand on just selling merch abroad that's that's awesome yeah so touring abroad even brought to realization that there is another avenue where fans can earn yeah another stream of uh, revenue from just merchandise which yeah. is taken highly for granted in India. and also uh, yeah also playing to people who never heard your music or who are not your friends you know just complete strangers it uh, it helps yeah yeah uh Am okay. I talking? Am I talking too much? You guys want to see? No, 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 no
listen to shit music. I want to go for a nice gig and watch bands, but, but there literally is no place. There's no ecosystem here that supports independent music as yet. You know, so um, it is it is disappointing. It's a little disheartening. We actually gave up on Chennai for the longest time. You know, even though we love this place and it's our home and stuff. But until we we played the weekend friends launch here in Chennai, yeah, yeah, and uh, we were like, okay, cool. I guess there'll be, you know, hopefully people will come because we are from here. You know, let's just let's just do a show here because it's been two years since we did the show here in our own in our own place. Yeah. I remember sometimes people would see us and they'd be like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> we're like, what do you mean? We're like. We live here. We feel like, aren't you guys a Bombay band or Bangalore band? We <laughs> live here. And uh, I remember that. So we played this launch at uh, in Chennai. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, mm-hmm. and it was sold out. And we were like, wow, Chennai has so Chennai has the potential and the capacity yeah. to really be a flourishing scene and represent India in independent music. Yeah. You know? But it just, uh, I guess, we lack the infrastructure or the money. Or, it's sad. Yeah, maybe, maybe the culture itself. Culture too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we move on to the next question. Um, yeah. Uh, where do you think the band actually took off? Uh, when was your? Uh, what, what do you think was your big break for? FPC? I'm still waiting for it, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Playing the underdog card, guys. Playing the over ambitious part, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> big That's break. Good, though, yeah. A big break. Um, like a lot of people, uh, it's it's obviously the you know the it's obviously the mass assumption okay. that we're we're like a sorted, super sorted band. Like you know yeah. we're we're good. Yeah. Like nothing's wrong. But uh, <laughs> we literally live paycheck to paycheck, man. Yeah. Like we still do. And uh, the fact that we it's taken us six years to even get a little bit of recognition that we have got now, it's a lot of it's a lot of shit you have to go through to even get here. So, uh, also primarily, I think uh, a big break. I think we were we we would be systematic. So we would be a label. We would want uh, better production, and then we wanted a record label, and then we wanted yeah. to tour. So we're still hitting those steps. Mm. But as in uh, to be in a place that I would personally be satisfied with, I don't think I'm there yet. Okay. Yeah. It's good. I mean, it's it's amazing. You have three million streams, but you know, per stream, it's like zero point zero 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 two. You make on per stream. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah. bollocks. That's fucking bollocks, man. I can't do shit with that money. You know, and especially if you base your entire life on production and. And working on your skill and uh, investing money to put out records, uh, it's uh, that's another thing I think a lot of people take light heart when it comes to music in India, is that they uh, see it as a hobby, a side chick, yeah. Or uh, and then because of that, there's a lack of longevity. And if you don't have longevity, you don't find a sound or you don't find that harmony you create with your other other bandmates too. Make good records. So because they don't reach that point first, a lot of people give up initially. So yeah, I'm just glad we stuck it out this long. So yeah, I hope we can keep at it and keep writing music. So until we run out of music, I guess, or the world fucking ends soon. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, uh, looking at all your pictures and posters and your Instagram. You guys seem to follow an ace. So, do you think that has helped you grow your audience, or uh, anything that anyway. that has helped you in any way, like your brand as an as epic? Mm, we, it's an it's a it's an uh, unconscious uh, aesthetic. You know? okay. It's uh, we weren't uh, going for this because this would appeal. It was something mm. like we enjoyed that. Uh, we were hoping would resonate with other people, I guess. But um, yeah, we're pretty chill dudes, man. Just be down to earth and not uh, put too much of a scene, and hopefully people click with it. I think the real, I think the more real you are, the more people relate to it, I guess. Yeah. So uh, we don't really go out of our way to do crazy stuff. But um, Shank, 
was in the next room. I think he's working and stuff. But uh, okay. he's the one who's our creative director for the after scene. So he handles all the merch and design and layouts and all that stuff. Yeah. So we have a good that's, team. That's sick. Uh, what advice do you have for upcoming bands and artists? Who, Quinn. Obviously, a lot of <laughs> these viewers are gonna look up. Uh, like I'm sure, look up to you. Definitely. Is that like do you have any advice or? Um. Yeah, I do have some advice. Um, okay. I think I, I, as I mentioned earlier, uh, longevity. I think it's super super important in any band. Maybe you know your first record is not going to be that hit record you have, but you got to keep at it, man. It's just like any other any other profession, you know. You don't become a doctor after like a year or like reading yeah. a textbook. You gotta you gotta practice for four years and then sorry, you gotta study for four years and practice for three and then you're a doctor, you know. Um, so I think longevity, you know, even with the F-16, there, there's been some really bad years we've had with each other. Like, like neck to neck, fucking <laughs> beat the fuck out of each other. Like, really bad, yeah. man. And almost to the brink of our extinction. But we stuck it out, came out the other side with thicker than ever. And, you know, like, it helps with the music. Yeah. So, uh, longevity, get a good producer. You know, get good production on your on your songs. Um, it can't be like write good music. So you know that's up to you. So, um, but do listen to a lot of music. Study or study your surroundings. Uh, find a good producer. If anybody is looking for a producer, uh, Harshu works at Barking Beat Recording Company. Uh, yeah. He's the one producing our new F16 uh, record. He's the one who produced and mixed and mastered the J Babe record. Um, so you know there is no lack of producers yeah. in Chennai or this country. You know, yeah. so um, get in, get good instruments, hone in on your skills. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's about it. Okay. And just be yeah, you, just be super super honest with the music. Yeah. yeah. So, how did uh, J Babe come about? J Babe was uh, so we would write a lot. I would write a lot of songs, and then um, so it's a it, these four bandmates work as like filters. Yeah. For me, so they'd be like, okay, this goes out, this comes in, fuck this, chuck this song completely. So there would be certain songs that I really liked. That they would be like it's garbage. <laughs> so I was like, um, I was like, I'm just gonna, I, I, you know, it's like a bad shit. Yeah. Like you, you're constipated. You have to take a dump, you know, because if you don't, it's gonna fester and you're gonna get stomach ulcers and shit like yeah. that. So I was like, I need to shit this music out, otherwise I'm never gonna be able to move on. Yeah, yeah. So I had these bunch of songs and. Uh, yeah, I just put them together, worked on it for a while, and uh, put them out. That's how J Babe started. Yeah, yeah that's crazy. And awesome. J Babe, it was just a very, it's just a spontaneous thing, man. It wasn't even like uh, yeah. I'm gonna propel my own solo career from you. No, it wasn't even like that. <laughs> it was just like J Babe is literally my Angry Birds user. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't. I didn't even think about. It. I just, I just put it out. There was a book. I was reading that was lying around by uh, okay. Charles Bukowski and I just named the album after him. Mm-hmm. So it was just very spontaneous stuff, I think very deliberate or very, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Same yeah. So Harshin had produced your uh, EP as well, right? Yeah, Harshin, we... Harshin produced it, uh, he mixed and mastered it. Well, he okay. didn't master it, but he mixed it, yeah. Okay, we'll, guys, we'll link Harshin's uh, socials down below. Uh, awesome. Marking the recording as well. So go check it out for all your production. Yeah, mixing master. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's solid. He's good. Uh, who's, uh, who's, uh, who's this third guy here? Michael Fimery? Yeah, he's recording though. He's, he's our friend who's recording. Yeah, he's uh, recording. also from MT. He's a producer and he's. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Josh, imagine we're in the same room 
and we have a huge budget and we have three cameras so this camera this camera this camera uh what's going on in your life <laughs> we all watch hot ones man <laughs> it's a tribute basically so it's not like yeah um uh I don't know man toot li toot to <laughs> uh we have a record that we're uh, um coming up with the f scenes yeah uh i want to tell you the title but i can't tell you the title Ooh. okay uh, that's all um uh, right. i have uh jb i have uh, i just songs i'm writing on the side but currently my entire being is uh focused on the new f scenes record and um Yeah, that's it, man. Just a new record coming up, and uh, hope to see you guys at some live show further on yeah. in. Yeah. For sure, yeah. Hope the world is in end, and we all. Just, <laughs> yeah, like uh, you know, I hope this is not the apocalypse, man. Apparently, what's yeah. what's the date today? Uh, It's the nineteenth. Yeah. I don't oh, know. Yeah. So, so apparently the world ends day after. So, anyways, nice. Oh, stuff. so you guys. Nice yeah. talking to you as well. Nice bro. catching you before that. Yeah, yeah, man. Up Thanks for the end. <laughs> <laughs> thanks yeah, for having me. It means a lot. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for joining yeah. us. Uh, thanks thanks thank for taking time. Uh, I know you have a really busy schedule recording your new thing. EP. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, yeah, thanks. Nobody loves you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Nobody loves. You. Yeah, I I know that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, nobody. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> right, guys. Thanks, thanks a lot Take for doing. Care. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good one. Yeah. Bye. Bye.